forward to our first Rotor Lecture of the Year. Uh, I am extremely excited, as should you be, to hear from Mark Melford this evening. So we've got someone who's an engineer by trade, a tech startup founder, but he also runs his own technology strategy consultancy. Uh, so if you don't mind helping me in welcoming Mark, thank you. Okay, thank you, Fersman. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2023 Rosewell Lecture. Um, if you have found yourself uh, concerned about climate change, alarmed by what you see in the news, or especially what you may have seen on TikTok, then uh, this is the talk for you. Um, the climate crisis is the great story of our age, but there is more than one side to it. There's more than one narrative to uh, every story. And I'd like to share uh, the side of this story, which gets much less news coverage than um, the weather, uh, but which is actually more interesting, more inspiring. Um, it's a story of analysis, of scientific advances, of incredible feats of engineering, ultimately of economics, and yes, politics. Um, but above all, it's a, it's a story of hope and of our own agency, and that's why we're here tonight. And it's a story of how we will actually solve the climate crisis. Uh, Michael Hume, the uh, professor of geography at uh, Cambridge University, has actually posited 11 different narratives of climate change, ranging from the crisis story, which is what one usually gets from the news, a uh, kind of catastrophizing narrative, right the way through to the story of climate change as a story of scientific endeavor, um, which is closer to what I'd like to share with you tonight, because you don't hear very much about it in the news. I'm not saying don't be concerned, do be concerned, because this is important, but I am here to say that you can think about the problem differently, um, because this has, and the flood is ultimately a symptom of climate change, not the cause. And so this whole story is about getting to the root causes and tackling them. Okay? Everybody up for that? That's our agenda. We've got about 40 minutes, I think, uh, which I will probably overrun. Let's see how we do. Right. Let's start by being clear on the culprits. Um, because, uh, as we I just said, the Drowning houses are not the problem, they are the symptom. Uh, the problem, of course, is the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And can anybody, for a bonus point, tell me what either of these two things are? Oh, I'm giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. So, CO2. Yes, that one is uh, carbon in the middle, and two little red oxygens. That's a carbon dioxide molecule. And the problem, of course, is the 39.5 gigatons of CO2 that we are putting into the atmosphere at the moment. All right, having given away the first one, I'm sure I'll press the right button. Someone can tell me what that is. The two. Ooh. Yes, anyone? You there? Uh, the methane. It is a methane. What is that? That is a molecule of CH4, the carbon four hydrogens, methane, and there. As I will go on to explain, there is an almost equivalent but very different problem of gigatons of methane going into the atmosphere. Roughly, roughly, roughly uh, 31, depending on the, the way you use to uh, measure it. Because methane is a very different problem to CO2. Molecule for molecule, methane is more warming than CO2. Significantly more warming. But it breaks down over a small number of years, and in fact, it's almost entirely gone in 10 years. And that means that when we talk about solving the climate crisis, there are actually two battles. In the long run, it's all about CO2. But actually, in the short run, by which I mean the next five to 10 years, it's very much about methane as well. And we'll talk about that in a little while. So, having identified the culprits, let's find out where they're hiding exactly. Of all the greenhouse gas emissions, about 25% of them come from 
fuel extraction electricity production. Another 24% are generated by agriculture, forestry, and land use, sometimes called the foliage, and it's the land. 21% from industry, all industry, so primary like steel making, manufacturing and all the goods you have, uh, chemicals. 14% is transport, not only cars, but shipping, aviation, uh, rail. 6% is from buildings. Firstly, putting them up, the building of the buildings, and secondly, of course, heating them. And lastly, there's 10% from other. Okay. And we can go further. So if I take the four big categories, we will actually have a look at just how much uh, greenhouse gas is associated with each in more detail. So at the top, Oopsie daisy. Oh, this is a little chart in gigatons of CO2. How many tons is a gigaton anyway? How many tons in a gigaton? I think it's a billion. Is that right? Yeah. I think it's a billion tons. So it's a lot. Uh, and so, within buildings, it's the data from the uh, Energy Tr uh, Transition Commission, a British think tank. It's, uh, it's very good on this. Uh, 5.1 from putting them up, 4.6 from other, cement is significant, road transport slightly more, 